I knew we'd talk about this topic sooner or later. Uh, I'm out. Oh. <laughs> Did you see it in your future? Was it That's... written in the stars? Correct. I saw it in my piece of toast this morning, in fact. This blur of James Devine leaving the podcast. Yes. And it said on the other side, over it. So, shut down. <laughs> <laughs> Light from Lantern presents Knit a Spell. I'm magical maker, Katie Rempe. And I'm the maker of magic, James Devine. Join us as we stitch together the symbiotic relationship between crafting and the craft. I am never over this topic, by the way. <gasps> Me this is my either. Favorite topic. What is divination exactly? Can you roll us yeah. through that? You know, I want your opinion on this too, but mm. if you look up divination, I think this is a pretty good modified definition of divination, the divination sure. definition. Divination is the attempt to gain insight into a question or a situation. And it's an attempt to gain insight into a question that we don't have visibility into already. Mm. And there's this word that comes up in the definition. The word is occult. Mm. So what does occult mean? Sounds scary, if, Jim. It sounds scary. That's <laughs> right. Because it's used to describe things that are scary. But occult by its definition, its non-scary definition is Anything that you can't see into, like the glass is a cult. That means it's non-transparent. It's hidden from view. So if the glass is painted black, then it becomes a cult. Or it's a medical term for things that like if your eye is a cult or something is occulted, it just means that it becomes oh. dark or it becomes opaque. If the answer to something is unknowable, like like what is someone else thinking or what's going on in that household or what happened in the past in that situation? What is going to happen in the future? What is happening in the present somewhere where I can't get access to? Mm -hmm. Those are questions that we don't and can't know. We might use a standardized process, a tool, a methodology, or a ritual to gain understanding or insight into our question our nosy ass question about something, right? Yes, correct. <laughs> <laughs> so there are different various forms of divination. And so then what we do is we use that method and then we read that form. And so we like, remember way back, we had that episode with Cindy Toto where she would yes. throw the bones That's right. and she would look at where the bones and the trinkets would land cloth. on her cloth. Yep. And she would determine what bones are touching what bones in which direction. And from those way the bones land, she would then divine or she would determine what was going on. And she would have a ritual before that would happen where she would cleanse the air, cleanse her spirit, mm -hmm. cleanse the objects and implements themselves using rum. This is some of the ritual and the tools that people would use. Mm -hmm. So that is my definition of divination. What would you add? I think you made a good point referencing that it's not just a future telling tool. These, This is not only to divine questions of the future. Like you said, it's the past, it's the present, it's all sorts of things. Also and, our, sub our unconscious. Exactly. I think it's important also to discuss then what is the difference between divination and quote, being psychic. Right, right. And I think we agree on this. Uh, yes. I don't think they are mutually exclusive. Yeah, but I think they're nesting. I think they nest onto each other in, yes. a, in an interesting way. So do you think that you need to be psychic to use the divinatory tools? So let's use tarot, the tarot cards. Do I need to be psychic to use the tarot cards? I don't think so. Much like magic. I don't think you need to be psychic to use magic either. Is it helpful? Probably. But is it needed? No, not at all. You know, especially if you understand the process and it makes sense to you. Having a faith in the process, I think, is probably the most important tool. Right. So 
I agree. I think that the divinatory tools can be used to access our unconscious mind Mm. just as much as they can be used to stimulate our psychic abilities. So in my opinion, I think that um, like Carl Jung used the tarot to access archetypal ideas Mm. from the major arcana and the minor minor arcana, from the images on the cards and what they mean as a way to access one's unconscious But I think that also the psychic ability, so being psychic, as we talked about in our Claire's episode, and accessing our psychic abilities, that also can be used with divination. It can also be used by itself without a divinatory tool whatsoever, where people can just sit and allow psychic images to show up. But I wouldn't call that divination. Yeah, I agree. I think divination, again, for me, requires or assumes a tool to help you interpret the information. Right. A, a tool, process, or ritual. I would agree. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. To, and because of that, it's there's like a bajillion zillion methods of divination, as it turns out. Anything could be a tool for divining an answer to something. Anything. Anything, Jim. Wait. Anything. Any, anything? Like the wrinkles in fabric? Yeah. Like the wrinkles in your face. Like. <laughs> Wait. You mean there's a name for that? There's a name for the types of divination, like like reading the wrinkles in my face is called satyomancy or something or faceomancy? Something mancy. Yes. Yeah. All the mancies are covered <laughs> here. All the mancies. <laughs> you coined uh, Yarnomancy at the beginning yeah. of the podcast a long time ago, and I still think about that all the time. Yarn- so. Yarnomancy. We, we, Madame Pamita and I coined um, smellomancy. There you go. Yeah, that's Sniff that's where out. you have too many um, magical oils, and you don't know which one to pick, and so you don't read the label, and you just smell each of them, and whichever one smells the best to you, then you read the label, and you're like, I guess that's what I need. Oh, ultimate power. That's what I need today. Ultimate power, apparently. Oh, I love that. <laughs> Actually, that's how I collect herbs into my teas too. I'll smell them. And if they smell right together and smell good to me, I'll know that's what I need. And it yeah. goes well together. You're, so, you're, right. you're doing smell a I didn't even know. There are some forms of divination that we do know pretty well. The divinatory titles for divination sometimes end in ology, mm. which normally that would be a scientific term. Normally we would say geology. And that's the scientific term. Mm. And geomancy would be the divinatory term. So usually we have it split that way. But occasionally the scientific term was previously co-opted by (laughs) the divinatory or the magical people. For instance, astrology is the divinatory term. So they don't say astromancy. Mm. They had to use something else. So they say astronomy. I never thought about that, but that's a great point. So there's the basic one we have of tarot card reading. Mm-hmm. And, and there's actually that's under the under the umbrella of reading all cards, whatever they are. So Lenormand, Oracle cards, playing cards. And that's called cardomancy. Yeah. Or is it cardomancy or cartomancy? Oh, is that a tomato tomato situation? I don't know. I think probably maybe it's like, (laughs) are you from England? Reading the tea leaves, Tassiomancy. Our favorite, palmistry. Yeah, palmistry, also known as chiromancy. (laughs) Uh, You can use pendulums, uh, like we said, bone throwing or any sort of tooth or trinket throwing to divine where they land. Um, Related to that, casting the runes. Yes, exactly. Mm-hmm. You may also have one of these in your household right now. Ouija board. <laughs> so fun. Yep. But that also sometimes is part of the thing where you do a ritual oh. and that's part of it. Like you have a tool mm-hmm. or a process. You may also do a ritual to call out a spirit's name, to cleanse the space, to call out a spirit's name, and then use the board with another person to use, to call the spirit or to find the spirit. And so you'll have these things that include ritual and a tool. So Mm. that's a great example of how you might do that. 
So, I mean, we could go on and on listing like a million of them. For everyone's reference who's listening, if you'd like to go down the rabbit hole of how many millions of billions of uh, mancies and ologies, etc. there are, we have linked in the show notes uh, to the wiki link of huge list of them for you to enjoy. So <laughs> I think there's in the hundreds. At yeah. The moment. Yes. Yeah. Again, proving that literally anything, even your own poo can be divined. <laughs> or animal droppings was very common. A mm -hmm. divination by birds in the ancient Greeks, um, yep. looking at how birds are flying, very, very common oh, uh, form yeah. of divination in ancient Greek. Mm. So yeah, there's all kinds of ways to do divination. And the ones we know, palmistry, card reading, pendulums are pretty common ones that we see today. But there's yep. lots of other ones that we use today too that are super fun. Scrying is one that's very common. Oh, Looking right, into mirrors yes. or crystals, things that like water. that. Water. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I like bibliomancy. I think that's a really good one where you're looking for something you can open up a book and just read a phrase and then reflect on it. Yes. That is yeah. one of my favorite ways to do it actually, especially if you need like a quick answer. It always seems like whatever you it's read is like, that's it. It's that's amazing it. how that works. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I want to know what your most successful divination tools are. What do you, what's your go-to? Um, well, obviously tarot is probably the big one. However, um, do you do that for yourself? I mean, every day or often? I have better results with other people than with myself. That's fascinating. Yeah. It's always harder to read for myself, no matter what it is. Yeah. Like but you don't for pull other a people, card, pull a card easier. to reflect on that card. I guess, did you do that at the beginning to learn? Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely to learn all the cards. And like, I wrote them all out and personal meanings too. And that really helped everything stick. Um, but but again, like, drawing the lines between the cards to answer the question for some reason is just easier when I am not full of my own bias. <laughs> well, I want to know which divination tool do you use for yourself? Is there another one that we don't know besides the cards that you use? Oh, um, probably, mm, mm, I don't know what the Mansi is called, but uh, music. <laughs> so I will usually have a question in mind. And then throughout the day, I'm always listening to music. Uh, normally, I will come across a song like this morning, for example, um, that will have like the perfect message in it or like just one line or two words together where I will like snap my head over and be like, what did they just say? What was that? Hold on. What was that? So, and that's how I know because normally I wouldn't pay attention because I've probably been listening all day, but that was the thing. So that's really cool. Well, mine is palmistry, but I don't really use, I use palmistry for other people. I don't use palmistry for myself because that doesn't work. But for myself, I will use the tarot mm. where I will pull a tarot card in or do a reading for myself and then reflect on that reading. Mm -hmm. So I find that that does work for myself. Um, but I also use runes. I will sometimes cast the runes mm. and read those. I've used runes for a long, long time. Oh. Kind of nobody really knows, but I will use those sometimes. Runes are tricky. Uh, I like them. So this is a great question then to go on that. What divination tool has not worked for you? <laughs> I can never get the pendulum to work oh, for me. Oh, really? And I own like three. Oh, I have it right here. <laughs> I have this beautiful box. Look at this oh, box. Oh, my God. It's so In cute. this like ebony, this amazing woods, right? It's like a little table. And it opens. It's got this gorgeous bag. So cute inside oh it has this absolutely stunning pendulum inside with my favorite stone beautiful amethyst and i hold it here like instructed i've never been able to make a pendulum work for me no oh well i don't know if this helps or not mine never circle <laughs> never but they will go back and forth and up and down but never a circle. You should try the necklace you're wearing. Maybe that would work. Yeah. You've so been this wearing it. This necklace is brand new. Oh. <laughs> it's um. I just received it as a gift from my friends at Soultopia. It was a surprise to receive as a gift. Ooh. Isn't it cool? Smoky quartz? Question mark. Yeah, smoky quartz. Ah, I'm nailing it. <laughs> 
Yeah. So like, how would that be? Yeah. Just like that. And then you establish yes and no. Show me yes. Show me no. It's reflecting um, rainbows. It could even be how it spins, like just twists instead of, you know, turning or whatever. So. All right. So pendulums, not so much your forte. That's fine. What's the thing that has not worked for you? Uh, I've always wanted to be so good with runes because I just feel like they're so badass and I don't get it. Like the meanings won't stick in my head no matter how hard I try. I have hard time telling some of them apart. And so I've even like made my own set before, which we'll talk in our second half. And I still can't read them well. So... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> whatever that's fine they're not whatever fine. runes uh, i'm not taking it too personally <sighs> well okay let's take a break <laughs> maybe we need to do some rune yeah, i'll calm down yeah <laughs> <Let's> <laughs> rune healing down. all right i'll calm down and we'll be back right after this break hey knit a spell fans my new knitting pattern, Sun Tea, has arrived and is perfect for the summertime. It's quick to make this season in washable woolly worsted by UU Yarns and combines two colors using mosaic knitting. Magical makers will enjoy exploring ways to add in intent-oriented correspondences using color magic, not magic, and more. Find out more on my website, lightfromlantern.com, or download the pattern right now on Ravelry. Have you ever wanted to be a professional palm reader? Coming this summer, I will be taking applications for my six-month online group apprenticeship program, the Divine Hand Mastership, where a limited number of individuals will have the opportunity to study the Divine Hand method of palmistry with me. You can sign up to learn more about this exclusive opportunity at thedivinehand.com forward slash mastership. I hope to see you there. Welcome back, everybody. So, Jim, how does someone go about finding which divination tool will best work for them? Is it just trial and error? Yes, it's trial and error. And no, it's not <laughs> trial and error. No. Perfect. Okay. <laughs> um, because if it was just trial and error, then you would just try one and be like, that's a stupid. And I don't then like throw this it away. Answer. <laughs> this is dumb. And you would try it once and pitch it. Like any tool, if you decided whether you wanted to ride a bike based on the first time you rode a bike, you would never ride a bike. Great point. I th- I mean, my opinion, I think it's practice. I, I'm saying this as a person who has tried the pendulum quite a bit. <laughs> yes, that's right. So I've tried the pendulum quite a bit. I keep my pendulum. I love my pendulum. I'm okay with having other methods. It's fine. It's beautiful. I appreciate that it works for other people. Yeah. And I find other divinatory methods that really work for me. I like to expand myself into things. Scrying is also sometimes difficult for me. It's also cognitively expansive. It it, it does something else to your brain in the meditative space Mm -hmm. to be able to expand your visual cortex and, and your ability to envision things. So I think that scrying is a skill that, that I encourage everyone to really attempt to have an experience with and have some of that with, even if it's hard. So I think it's worth practicing. I think you hit the nail on the head. It's a discipline and people hate that word, but it's true. Just like you said, like if my first knitting experience set me up for the rest of my knitting life, I would have run in horror because it was in a different language. And I didn't know what the hell any of it meant. How do I even get the materials for it? So um, yeah, it's all about ha- having the desire, right? To want to do it and then actually doing it consistently. And maybe that's the difference between the runes and the whatever. Maybe if I'd have done it more, eventually it would have come through. But you know what? There's so many options that like, why force one, right? <laughs> There's so that's many. True. And, and in 10 years, the pendulum may end up being your best tool. Things change in weird ways. So who knows? So it's a good thing that the pendulum is my favorite stone and my favorite color. And there it's got go. a fairy at the end. <laughs> it <Yeah>. sure helps. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I love that because you don't have to do the runes. There's a lot of other divinatory methodologies and there's a lot of other crafts. You don't have to knit. Exactly. I was just recently thinking about how I haven't really knit much. 
since the beginning of our podcast. But then I was thinking, gosh, there was a really cool crochet pattern I was seeing. Mm. And I was thinking whether it would be um, offensive for me to start crocheting. <laughs> like, what would Katie think? Are you think worried about offending started... me? Yeah. Would it, would it offend Katie if I started crocheting? And I thought I saw the headlines I now. Love it. TMZ would be after us because the co-host of Knit a Spell started oh. crocheting. Jim, 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 can we have a picture, please? With why? What is? Why are you just holding one tool? Why? Where's the I, other? I needle? can't talk to you, TMZ. I can't. Talk are you to a you. hooker now? What's oh, happening? Stop yeah. it, TMZ. Stop chasing me. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I don't want to really talk about it. <sighs> wow. Okay. Well. See that offended, that escalated but... that escalated quickly. <laughs> Um, well, allow me to ease your mind. I I don't mind at all. I, I want you to find a craft that you love. And plus, you have in-house help with crochet. So that probably would, would make it easier. So I almost um, felt like I was coming out, but I haven't even done it yet. Oh, <laughs> well, that's you know what? I feel like I've been cheating on my knitting a little bit lately also because I've been taking <gasps> up so much embroidery lately. So, you know, it's a craft. Um, you do other crafts. It's whatever. <laughs> look to your left. Is your yarn staring at you right now? <laughs> it is, but it's saying, you know, you can embroider with us too. <laughs> uh oh, there's just more options now. That's right. So I think this is the same with divination. I don't think that your divinatory tool that you've left neglected in a drawer is mad at you. We have all these different divinatory ways and methods and crafts, all of our mm -hmm. crafts are in the same bucket and and we can use them and explore them and some of them somehow are just resonate with us differently yeah and a lot of time they end up overlapping anyway as we found mm -hmm. so just to add a new layer on i discovered that one of the techniques in embroidery requires you to cast on to a needle there you go i yes. was like are you kidding that's one of the ways to make petals of a flower is to cast onto a needle. You can't yes. get away from knitting even if you try. That's right. It's a tiny wand. So speaking of making, have you made any divinatory tools? Okay. When I was a kid, I came up with this whole divin divinatory system. Whoa. And I can't remember where I lost it. Oh, it, no. was in a note, it was in one of my notebooks as a kid. And one day I think I might find it and maybe I'll use it, but it used a box and like rocks and all kinds of this whole like method. Oh. And I thought, oh my gosh, one day I want to find that. And I'll be like, I was genius. Or maybe I'll be, I was an idiot. But anyway, <laughs> it was, I remember making that in particular. And I really wish I could find that. As an adult, I have been thinking about a, palmistry divination card deck oh. that would be different and i've sketched out a couple so i have some of those sort of in mind there are some palmistry card decks that are out there i have a different sort of model and idea for one that i've been really thinking about it's helpful to apply game theory to divinatory oracle decks yes so those are some things that i've been thinking about but what about you have you ever created or crafted a, or have ideas for one well, um, you know, back when I was really into runes, <laughs> still trying to make that work, uh, I was like, oh, I'm going to make my own set. It's going to be awesome. And took the opportunity to go walk along the beach one day and pick out the stones that caught my eye until I had enough. And then I went home and drew all of the runes on with Sharpie, which was a horrible idea because it came off on my hands immediately. And so if I had an etching tool, that would have been better. But uh, I still have them. Eventually, maybe I'll use them again. But recently, since I've been getting into so much cardomancy or whatever it's called, I developed a game or I'm developing a card game <laughs> that uses intuition to answer questions. So um, we'll see if I end up rolling that out just for fun for people and our listeners, if anyone's interested later in the year. So that's cool. We used to play witches poker. What's that? So have you ever played like blind man's poker? It's called where you put a playing card um, on your forehead. Oh, you don't know what this card is, but everyone else does. Well, we would play this with tarot cards. And then it's called witch's poker because people would read you based on the card you have. Oh. But you don't know what it is. 
Okay. It was super fun to do it that way. It's like, guess so, who? So for those listening, I put the card on my forehead, like sort of balanced on my glasses. Well, I've learned a ton in this episode. I don't know about you. I love divination. It's such a fabulous tool for us to use. And we talk about it also in making that you can use divination when you're making exactly. what scent to use, what herbs to use for, you know, water to, to block with. What does the person that I'm making this cowl for need? If you don't know, you can pull a card and say, okay, this is for power. They need power. They need, you know, release or they right. need freedom. Yeah, they need exactly. strength. We use divination for the spells to guide us on our spell work, to guide us on our magic, to guide us on our making. So divination is a really key part of a lot of the magic and a lot of the things we use. So it can help guide us when we're not sure of our own unconscious of, of what's guiding us. So I think that's an important aspect to whatever we're doing. Yes. And even for mundane purposes, which we know are also magical, <clears throat> it's just a great decision-making tool. Like, it doesn't have to be, quote, woo. Like, if you just need help deciding between this and that, guess what? Pictures on cards will help you figure out how you feel. Because even if it says an answer you don't like, guess what? Now you know you don't like it. So, <laughs> exactly. Reflect. Reflect. It's like mm -hmm. saying, where are we going to go for dinner? Suddenly, you don't have an opinion until Jim said he wants Indian food. And you're like, well, I don't want Indian food. I want sushi. Well, good job. Now you know. Speaking of divination. Yes. Shall we pull up. a card? I'm going to surprise you. Yay. I'm going to pull a card out of this bag. Oh, my gosh. Very excited. Yes. Speaking of ready, runes. Ready? Yes. I, it, this is a Cosmic Whisper rune deck by Co Karina. Let's Beautiful. see what card oh, we get. So here, here's the question. Yeah. Okay. How will a form of divination present itself to us this upcoming week? Here it comes. This is Lagos, the water. Lagos is the letter L. It's the origin of the letter L in English. The meaning is water. The symbolism is the unconscious mind, emotion, love, Dreaming, ocean, life, energy, evolution. As life itself started in water, this rune invites you to discover and explore the depths of your unconscious mind, as well as your honest connection with others. To the Norse, the ocean represented also wild forces, ones that if we're not respected, could lead to destruction. Mm. While discovering the depths of our unconscious mind, Lagos challenges us to face our fears and insecurities in order to grow stronger and come alive when fighting with the ocean. So I love this. So the question is, how will a form of divination present itself to us in the upcoming week? Look for that in our unconscious, in our intuition, in our emotions. Maybe even exploring a form of uh, divination that uses water could be, or fog, or you know, steam, or something in the again hydromancy world could be helpful to explore this week. Yeah, for sure. You could use it very literally, as in look into the water, look at the sun on the water. Mm. You can look at different forms of of divination that act, use literal water, you could use it symbolically, which is the idea of water as a form of emotions and as, as the symbolism of our emotions and as of our intuition. It's also interesting that um, we're in this time of everything's in Aries, that we have this stellium in Aries, and you can look at the water as what is counter to that or what is balancing that. Mm. Clouds are also a great place to do... Um, you know, neblomancy, or as it said here, nephomancy yeah. is by looking at the clouds. So yes. wonderful things to look at. So mm -hmm. I hope that's inspiring. Yes. And if you have any insight or if anything appears to you over the week, drop us a line. We now conveniently have a way for you to do that on our website, knitispell.com, or you can just drop us an email at knitispellpodcast at gmail.com. We've had some people record a video and send us a link to that. Send That's us right. an email. You can do any of those things. We love it. Well, Jim, thank you for all of your insight into this episode and this topic specifically. I'm very inspired to go make a new divination tool. Knit me some runes. <laughs> I think I might. Yeah, Maybe that will help me connect Just, with them better. Well, thank you everyone for joining us and we'll see you next time. See you then.
Thanks for Thanks listening. for listening. If you enjoyed the show, consider sharing it with a friend, leaving a review on iTunes and Spotify, or following Knit a Spell on Instagram. You can also subscribe to the Light from Lantern YouTube channel to enjoy full episodes of Knit a Spell and see our happy faces. You can also learn more about readings, classes, and events going on with your favorite maker of magic, James Divine, by visiting thedivinehand.com and subscribing to his newsletter. Then follow Jim's fun and interactive Instagram account at Divine Hand Gym. Keep up with Katie, the magical maker, by subscribing to her newsletter at lightfromlantern.com. You'll even receive a free knitting pattern as a thank you gift. Then follow Katie on Instagram at lightfromlantern for even more magical making tips. See you next next week. week.